You trying to go to work with me? Yeah? Yeah? Good morning. Uh, so today is another kind of ride along job site day. Uh, I've got some columns to paint. They're exterior fiberglass columns and uh, here in the lovely state of Pennsylvania, it is getting a little chillier. Uh, so uh, fall is upon us and winter is coming. So we've got to close out our exterior stuff uh, as soon as possible. We have a few little trailing jobs that we're trying to uh, rock out before the end of the season. So uh, these two columns just got done a couple weeks ago. Um, so that is what I'll be doing today. Uh, I just ordered the paint uh, from Benjamin Moore and now I'm on my way over there. And uh, it's getting, it's kind of like mid-morning right now around 9.30. I had to wait for the uh, air to warm slightly because uh, I don't like painting with cold hands. So anyway, let's go, shall we? This is the fine establishment of Austin Briggs. And uh, if you're in the neighborhood, this is the place to go. This guy, Welcome to New Britain. Mr. Paul Dunn is an absolute wizard <laughs> and a semi-professional cameraman in his own right. So I'm hoping he's not too critical of my skills in this video. All right, so uh, got all my stuff at the old Austin Briggs and uh, now I'm ready to go over to the job site. Um, however, it's starting to warm up so we can uh, switch to the old, the old work hat now. Um, but uh, I'm... I didn't pack a lunch today because uh, I'm dumb and my wife's awesome and makes me food all the time. Um, we just had a lot of the same soup like many days in a row. So I just want something a little bit different today. So I'm gonna go grab a, probably a bagel sandwich of some sort and uh, then we'll go to the job site because I'm still a little hungry. Exciting, exciting things. Let's go. Ooh, yes, yes. Look at that goodness. It's the Wilbur. Vittles acquired, let's go. All right, just made it to the job site. And uh, of course, when I roll in and try and do these columns, uh, the carpenters are here, which uh, that's fine. But it um, seems like anytime I do exterior work, someone wants to uh, use a chop saw or something right next to it. So I will have to wait for a little while. Also, they're running a air compressor. Uh, so I might have to keep kind of coming out to the truck to uh, do the audio, um, but I'll kind of just, We'll go look at the columns right now and uh, see what's up. They shouldn't be here too long. Yeah. We're going to have to wait. Alrighty, so uh, I've got to delay my column painting experience here because the carpenters are running an air compressor and a chop saw, of course, uh, right where I would like to be working. So. Uh, you know, part of being a contractor and a good one is uh, being adaptable. So my truck is disgusting right now. So I'm just going to take some time to clean it out. I'm going to pull out all the stuff in the bed. You'll see like this, this is not, this is not great. So I'm going to pull everything out and organize. I've got some bags in here. See, see, see the carpenters ruining my footage right there. Yeah, it's fine. So I'm going to, I'll probably time lapse this, just clean some stuff out, and then I might get to my interior, I might not. And uh, we'll kind of keep on keeping on here. All right, so I've got the back of my truck all clean and uh, are relatively organized. I'll show you guys that real quick. This is relatively organized, but all my pan stuff's over here. The drop cloths go in the bin that's in the far back. Uh, I've got like lights and extension cords in this red case here. Uh, generally, I've got my fan located down this lane. And then this bucket, I've got uh, roller covers and some quick access stuff, usually my tape and caulking stuff's in here. Um, close to the driver's side here is got like trash bags and other plastics and cling wrap, cling wrap and stuff in there. Then usually in this section, my shop vac kind of hangs out here. 
Some of you, uh, particularly painters, might be asking yourselves, why on earth am I using a truck and how come I don't have a van? Um, and it's because I'm not creepy and I don't want to drive a van. I finally have the job site to myself here and uh, kind of the, the carpenters were here for a little while. It's, uh, I'm getting started a little bit later than I wanted to, but I also got my truck cleaned, so that's good, and did uh, some other things. So these are the columns. I'll show you guys here in a second, right behind me. So bang, we got, yep, 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 there it is, right there. So this guy, and then there's another one of those right in front of me, which I'll show you in a second. Um, these are fiberglass columns that just got finished a little while ago, and they're looking pretty good. Um, they're already been caulked in and everything, so there's not a crazy amount of prep I have to do. Um, but uh, the it's very pretty straightforward, kind of like I'll say a three-step process, which I feel like almost every tutorial I've done on this or like job site thing, it's always like a three-step process. But here we go. Uh, so I'm going to prime the fiberglass and the uh, top trim pieces on these columns. Um, I'm just going to use a uh, multi-purpose exterior primer. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. Um, and then we have, uh, we're using my favorite exterior paint, which is Benjamin Moore's More Glow Soft Gloss, um, which we use all the time on a lot of exterior stuff. So uh, that is what I'm doing today. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Let's rock these columns out. All right, so everything is tarped off. More on that in a second. But I need to get some uh, roller frames, two roller frames and two edging containers. One for primer, one for the finish coat. And now that my truck is super well organized, for my truck anyway, uh, they're easy to find, which is great. All right, so pretty much have what I need now. And uh, I got my little station set up over here. And uh, we are about ready to prime, which we're gonna get to here in but a moment. I just wanted to kind of quickly demonstrate, I've talked about this ad nauseum on this channel already, um, but as a professional painter, uh, one of the things that I see all the time that people will not do a good job with, even <laughs> especially less good professional painters, is they don't tarp off enough area for their working environment so that they're getting splatter and paint on things that they should not. That is very common and most of, I would say a large portion of being a good painter is not getting paint on things you shouldn't get paint on. So as an example, I'll show you what I've got tarped off here. Um, I've already, I put green tape around the base of these columns and it's like, it's out pretty far. So if this drop cloth walks back, I'm still covered when I go to roll. I've got my little station set up here and then all of this is tarped off, even their little swing right here. And then I've got that tarped off. I pulled down the gutter on the other side and then there's the little swath that's uh, tarped off too. So see all that? Cause it's not just about where you're painting but where you're walking when you're painting. As you're painting, uh, you could get stuff on the drop cloth, step on it and then walk it, like get it on your shoe and then spread it around other areas. So that's not good. Just uh, no one's ever complained because someone's tarped off too much stuff that I know of. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so now we're going to prime. And I just saw what I had in my truck as far as primers go. And uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of inside baseball on uh, primers, because some of this is weird. Um, but I'm gonna use, this is, let's see if I can get it on camera. This is Pro Block Prep Right Sherwin Williams. And for those that don't know, uh, this is, if you're familiar with multi purpose, which I've talked about a bunch on this channel before, it's the same product. It just has a different label and it's made more for like contractors and stuff, I guess. And sometimes they're different prices, which is weird because it's literally the same product. Um, or so I have been told. And it's also been my experience that they function absolutely the same. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, pour myself an edging container. I'm just going to uh, prime the bases and the uh, the fiberglass here. I'm just going to cut in what I can't roll and then I will be using uh, to roll, which you're going to see me use this for both the prime coat and the finish coat, is going to be 
uh, the Wooster, what is this? Yes, so this is the quarter inch nap, very tight nap roller for smooth surfaces, which is what this fiberglass is. Um, and uh, that's a nine inch roller, but that's what I'm gonna be using uh, for the main parts of the column. All I'm cutting in are the tops and the bases because I can't have that with the roller. So I'm gonna be using these for, again, the prime coat and the top coats, which when you're thinking about your final surface that you're looking for, it's really important that you use the same uh, roller type for the priming and the finish coat because whatever layer you put on, that's gonna start creating the texture that will be your final texture, even if it's a base coat. Um, but onward to actually painting. Here we go. Okay, I just recorded a really long section and it turns out it was not recording. So I'll give you the abridged version. <laughs> the, uh, these columns are all primed. They're looking really good. So there you go. It's looking spiff. Boom, that's all primed. And so is this guy. Hadow. Yeah. But anyway, it's a good base coat that's gonna dry. Um, I do need to fill the nail holes at the, the, the tops of these columns that are like right, on the, yeah, right up there. So there's holes in there that I need to fill. Um, and then it's important to not use an interior wood putty. Uh, the orange stuff that you see us use all the time, uh, that's rated for interior use. So uh, that's not what I'm gonna be using on this. I'm gonna use Sherwin-Williams Shrink-Free Spackling. It's a weird name for a product, but that's what we're using because it's rated for exterior use. It's easy to just smudge it in there with your fingers, let it dry, and then I'll sand it if I need to. Uh, so that is what I'm doing right now. And okay, uh, time to fill these nail holes and watch some paint dry. Alrighty, the primer is drying right now and uh, I filled those holes up at the top. Uh, th those are gonna take a little bit to dry because that's a pretty soft uh, product, just has a little bit of a longer dry time than some of the other kind of like thicker wood putties. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do the rest of the columns. I'm going to cut the top lines in uh, with the finish paint and uh, and then I can do the full bases because those weren't um, uh, There's no nail holes in there. Um, those got caulked in are all good. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I'll come back to the top of the columns after the first top coat has dried and uh, one thing about this color uh, that I had never heard before um, I was talking to the homeowners and they were curious as to like what color to use and they uh, were they were gonna paint these kind of a darker color and then they uh, actually looked at the instructions of this uh, fiberglass material that they're made of and it said uh, that you shouldn't you should stay away from dark colors and uh, none of the colors should have a an LRV of I think below 50 I think it was something like that if you don't know about LRV I did a video on that you can check that out if you want to but basically the higher the color the lighter it is the lower the color the darker it is so 100 is like a perfect bright white and then zero would be like a perfect dark like black so uh, they they had picked a color the LRV was 39 um, which is fairly dark and I think the issue that the manufacturers of these columns are worried about is that if you have a dark exterior color and it gets hit with sun, it's gonna heat up and get really hot. Um, so if the fiberglass gets very hot, which is a concern, it can warp and crack and come apart at the uh, seams and stuff. So it was just an interesting thing. We kind of figured that out and we have picked a different color um, which Paul helped them out yesterday, uh, which you guys met this morning. And we're going with uh, Pebble Beach 1597, if you are curious. And uh, again, we are using the Benjamin Moore uh, Soft Gloss. It's the Moore Glow Soft Gloss. It's from their Regal Select line of exterior products, which are absolutely awesome. It is my favorite. And the Soft Gloss is very close to a like factory satin. So it's gonna be a really nice finish. It's my favorite exterior paint. I go on and on about it because it is awesome. Uh, so that's what I'm using. And I did get a quart, uh, which is gonna be plenty to do these two columns. So yeah, that's where we're at. And I'm gonna start working on top coat number one. Oh. 
Oh, hey. So I've got one coat on uh, the columns. The texture is looking pretty good. I like the finish quality and it's looking pretty spiffy. Uh, there is a few areas that I'm gonna have to hit with that exterior spackle. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. It, you can actually see it on the camera, I think pretty good. So this, this is all from the texture of the uh, fiberglass. So that's not from the roller or anything. So I'm just going to do a uh, kind of like a, a little light coat of spag on a few areas that look like this. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, once it's sanded, uh, then I'll do run my second top coat. Um, but overall, these are looking pretty sweet. All right, the spackle's all dry, so I'm just gonna sand it, and I think I might go ahead and just spot hit those areas uh, with the finish paint, just in those areas, and then I'll do one final uh, kind of top coat. So I'm just gonna run around these columns real quick and knock that out, and then we'll be kind of moving on. Uh, everything is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and cut in the tops and the bottoms of both columns and then roll the last coat. So uh, as long as none of the, the uh, spackled spots flash through, we'll be good. Uh, so we're, we're almost done. We're almost done. End of the day, it's looking good. And uh, yeah, it's kind of probably going to be one of the last nicer days of the season. So I'm stoked to be getting this done. Ready to go? I am done. The second coat is drying on the columns right now and I've pulled tape and cleaned up and everything is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna wait on reattaching the uh, gutter that's uh, over here. Um, I'm gonna let that go because I'm coming back here in like two days to do some interior work and I just don't like messing with stuff when it's this soft because it is still uh, a little bit wet. Um, but other than that, everything is good to go. I think the clients are gonna like them. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, you might also like the review I did of the exterior product that I used on these columns, uh, which is Benjamin Moore's uh, More Glow Soft Gloss. I will link to that video at the end of this one. And until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Please. Bye. Bye. Amazing.